you please start off by introducing yourself, what you drive, and what you do with your business? Hi, my name is Craig Filippi. I currently drive a 1989 240SX, and my business is a fabrication shop here at Sonoma Raceway. I build race cars, um, just about anything you can think of. Very cool. And at what age did you get into cars? Birth. Um, no, like probably around 14. Um, somebody wanted my sister to do a donut in a Mustang and she didn't know how to do it. So I lied to her from the passenger seat and told her that I did. And uh, she bit and let me drive. And uh, that was pretty much the birth of wanting to drive a drift car. I love it. Uh, okay, well then that answers the next question. What made you get into drifting? Uh, the actual <laughs> thing that pushed me into drifting, because at that time of that donut, I didn't know that that was drifting. That was just simply doing donuts. Um, but what led into drifting is I had a friend with a 66 El Camino and he said that my Mustang was a piece of shit because it was Ford. It had a supercharger. So I told him, let's go for a ride. We start beating the neighborhood up in third gear, doing Manji, Manji and high speed Manji's down the streets and side, drifting the turns. And uh, there, there was sheriffs evicting someone at my corner and they, I couldn't see them because I had went through the corner the other direction and I obviously wasn't looking behind me. Well, I did a big lap and ended up back in front of my house and uh, we're coming up my hill and here's two cops coming down my hill. So I slam on the brakes, almost hit them. I'm dead in front of my own house now. These cops get out, guns drawn, get out of your car. They pull me out of the car. There's nothing in the car. It's gutted. It just has two seats. They say, what the hell are you doing? And I said, sir, my buddy in the passenger seat is a Chevy guy. One cop laughs, one cop gets super mad. He's like, do you think this is funny? I'm like, no, sir, my house is right here. The 66 El Camino is my buddies. We're in my Ford. I don't know what to tell you. I'm just showing what a Ford does. And he, literally the two cops played bad cop, good cop. And I didn't really know which route they were gonna go with their thought. Um, but to make a long story short, they basically told me, put the car in the garage, don't let, me, don't let me see it on the street again, we'll crush it, you know. That week, uh, one of my best friends, Elijah Wright, uh, told me about Thunder Hill, an event there, and we went up there and did a drift event, and that was like the first official trying to drive. And I remember uh, Andy Gillespie, um, Thomas Olick, like a bunch of like, OG dudes now, they were driving and they were killing it. It was like, oh yeah, that's what I want to do. Like, that's totally it. Julian Jacobs, Julian Jacobs was driving that day. Like when I still, you know, like, he's probably been one of the best drivers that I've seen throughout the years. I never get to drive with him, uh, probably just because our styles are so different or we'd look at drifting in different eyes, but like that dude rips. Like I'd love to drive with him. Is that animal style, Julian? Yeah, Julian, Julian rips. Like yeah. he really does. Uh, All right. Well, can you tell me about an early experience drifting? Now you just shared a few, but do you have any? Let's share one about on track. What was your, like, your first early experience on an actual track? First experience on a track was weird because I kept catching myself looking for cops. <laughs> um, most memorable early experience on track was crashing my first car. Um, it. it it happened so fast. Uh, I, w we're, I was at Stockton 99 and I, I threw the car into the wall, uh, hit too hard with the back, which put the front up into the wall. Um, and I remember sitting in the car and like, like literally thanking the gods that, that it happened like on a racetrack because I had never crashed a car before. And, it, and I had done so much stupid shit on the streets that it was like, like, oh, thank you that this happened. Thank you for teaching me this lesson here. Right. And like, I, since I, I've driven a truck, I don't, I don't drive fast cars on the street. I can't, I, I just can't, I, I cannot drive fast cars on the street. No, 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 <laughs> <laughs> no. You caught a bad thing? Bad. <laughs> Cause I just start driving the car. Right. And then all of a sudden I'm like, catch myself driving it. I'm like, fuck, like how, what was I just doing? Why did you do that? Right. <laughs> Swing that corner. <laughs> Uh, what made you pursue competition? Formula Dread. Um, yeah, Luke. Luke Crawl. <laughs> uh, um, I, I always have been competitive because I never believe in anyone saying they're the best from the sidelines. Um, 
and I, I've never competed to be better than anyone. Competition in drifting is a really amazing thing. You beat yourself 99.9% .9 of the time, and only that 0.10% does someone actually beat you. You bobble, you car sputters, uh, some, just something, like you get, like um, it, it's very rare that you just truly get beat. And getting beat is actually special because then it's like you, you have something to like aim for, right? Um, but competition is definitely um, something that needs to be like you're competing against yourself. Definitely. Truly. And Formula Dread, my buddy Robert Luba, um, anyone that's ever like thought I was a good driver is pretty much what led to me being a pro because it literally wasn't a goal of mine. Right. I never thought I'd be able to afford it. Well, do you have any plans to compete again? Yes. Yes. I want to drive 2021 um, in a new chassis, a Corvette um, C6. Um, if 2021 is kind of like 2020, we might skip to 2022 just because of the world's a weird place right now. Definitely. Um, I will I want to drive again in competition because it's the only time you get to drive against drivers that are like as thirsty or as hungry like as I am. I feel like, you know, like um, it, it, you never get to drive with another dude with a thousand horsepower that's willing to hit your car. That, that only happens there and once you have a taste of that it's like it really doesn't nothing replaces that like local events you drive with your buddies have fun it's real cool it's so not the same though right. it's just tour competition is almost like like i feel like that's where i want my home to be in driving and it's not because i want to be better than anyone. it's it, it's totally just because that's that's the stage where all the best drive definitely makes sense uh what are your 2021 driver goals then if I drive FD in 2021, um, my driver goals are to, I would like to hone myself as a driver uh, in regards to the builder side. Like there had been times when I drove my previous car where I would clutch kick the car to, to ramp, ramp up the wheel speed and it would be such a shock load to the drivetrain that me as the builder sitting in the driver's seat would be like, don't do that again. And in competition, you catch yourself handbraking and clutch kicking a car and being just really abusive. So I, I would like to, if I could drive with the same amount of style, but drive easier on the equipment, that would be a good driver goal for this year. I like that. Just simply that. Just clean it up a little just bit. Just clean it up. I like that a lot. Um, if you could give an aspiring drifter one piece of advice, what would that be? Um... Don't think that anything is not able to be got. Like, set. Don't like. Don't think it must be nice. Like, never think it must be nice, because people who think it must be nice never know the grind of the person they're saying it must be nice to. And people say that to me, and I'm like the hardest working person that I know. And it hurts to hear that shit. So it's like, just make sure that you're not one of those people. Like, focus on just grind. Get it. Yeah. Take it. Take what's yours. Um, in your opinion, what is the best chassis for a first timer and why? Um, S13, all day long. S14, E36. Um, if you could spend a little bit of money, obviously Corvettes and new Mustangs. They're... Just watch a Chelsea Denova clip. Who doesn't want to drive like that? <laughs> yeah. Like, no one wants a Mustang. Everyone wants to be Chelsea Denova. <laughs> right? <laughs> three wheel in it. Uh, what are the first three mods someone should do to their drift car? Steering angle, coilovers, handbrake. Um, handbrake, very controversial one. Very, very controversial. Uh, handbrake is a tool for drifting. Whether you believe in using it or not, it is a tool for drifting. It is to check yourself up. It is to change your apex. Uh, it, it has a million uses once you have it. So that's why I would pick that over something like, if you're in a car that has a bench seat, I think I'd go with a bucket seat over the handbrake. But if you're in like a 350Z, something with bolsters, absolutely a handbrake be the third mod. Very cool. That's nice to hear that instead of the seat. 
Um, and then just to keep things light and fun, if you could be a fruit, what fruit would you be? <laughs> Purple eggplant emoji. <laughs> yes, so we love it. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for your time. Are there any sponsors or support you would like to shout out and thank? Yes, um, Phoenix Industries um, and Fittings Plumbing. They've always supported me and my team, amazing people. Um, Paul at XXR Wheels. Like, I don't care what anyone says about an XXR wheel. They support drifting. They support the whole scene of drifting. That makes them an awesome wheel manufacturer. Yep. Um, Paul is an awesome dude. They've always stood behind us too. I, I've, I went to events and broke wheels, posted the clip breaking the wheel and had them call and say a wheel's in the mail. That's impressive. Like we didn't even have to tell them, ask them for a replacement. Like they're amazing help. Get back to the community. Um, Fitzgerald glider kits in Tennessee, Lisa Fitzgerald. Um, she put a lot of faith into me. Um, and that, that's a blessing. Um, Robert Luba, my family, all my friends, everyone at Sonoma Drift, everyone, everyone at Sonoma Drift, the whole staff, everyone at Sonoma Drift is definitely like, this is where I learned how to drive, was here at Sonoma. Um, I was privileged enough to do a demo here when they thought about having drifting here and never in my life did I think Sonoma Drift would grow to what it is today. Uh, and it's been amazing watching the growth here. It really has. Definitely. This is a special place. Awesome. Well, I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for having me.